Garage fam, welcome to the Garage Guys NASCAR race preview show presented by Hooters. It's uh, Sonoma or Sonoma, as some call it, the Toyota Save Mart 350. We're going to talk about bets. We're going to talk about road. We're going to eat grapes. We're going to look at the book of road. And we're going to talk about our, our guy, Dale Tanhart, and his unretirement. And we're going to do that right the fuck now. So let's just start off there. Dale, tell us about the day. And, uh, and, and how it feels to be unretired. Yeah, cheers to Sonoma and unretirement. Cheers. I'm out of the Claiborne here, back in the heart of America. Decided that it was time to unretire. Sent out a uh, fax letter just like MJ uh, via my attorney, which is myself, via my company, which is myself, that I am back and unretired. So... Welcome back, everybody, to my unretirement party. Wine on deck in honor of Sonoma as well. Uh, even through retirement, didn't go so badly. Uh, I think it was a good move because when I did announce my retirement, the bets got a little bit better and we made some progress in the season. Up 62.4 units between Cup, Xfinity, and Truck Series action this year. And finally, got a big Cup win. And that's the most important part of all this. Last week, we had uh combined both had joey logano and had a big payout for the garage guys and the garage fam a lot of guys and girls in the discord had logano there's a a plethora of winning slips and it was really fucking cool but yes i am back i am officially unretired if you saw on twitter if you didn't see on twitter you see it now so here we are it's sonoma time back on a road course uh we got some good bets to throw out there for you guys and gals heading into the weekend don't forget Xfinity series is off for a couple weeks after and, and probably much needed after the chaos that was Portland. Beautiful chaos, but nonetheless, fucking crazy. Uh, I don't think the drivers enjoyed it too much, but trucks are here Saturday at Sonoma. I think the race is like Saturday at like five or something. So it's technically truck night in America, even though in Sonoma, it will be daytime. So don't forget about trucks, have bets there. Uh, we'll have the article and we'll have my betting card. Uh, the article will be from Derek. Derek Yoder's been really good at trucks. And obviously, my betting cards have been the best in the universe when it comes to truck series competition. So, cheers to Truck Night in America back once again and Cup and the Book of Road. Right. We got the Book of Road. It was very impressive. It was a great, great talk. DTI, I'm not going to lie. When I first heard it, I, I know where it was Sounds from. Sounds like an STD. Thought about a UTI. Yeah. No, you know, but it's a D. So it's okay. Dale Tanner yeah. Incorporated does have a good ring to it. Um, DTI something can ask to do see that. the paperwork. I'm ready to see it. Um, so let's talk about. I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna be eating grapes, and, and Dale's gonna be drinking wine because it's Sonoma, and that's just how it goes. Um, obviously we're not in Sonoma or Sonoma. I can only say it so many times before it's just cringe as shit. Sorry. Um. But we're not there. We, we would be there in spirit. But we're here to announce some very big news, okay? Huge news. And this is going to be something that, uh, that Dale and I have loosely spoke about. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and put it out there. There is going to be a, uh, a Grand Memorial uh, Book of Road ceremony held um, uh, around Indianapolis Motor Speedway weekend for the road. And we're going to do a, uh, a, a dinner. We're going to do a dinner. We're going to find a way to do the dinner. We're going to have the, the people that win between uh, the, the race in, in Sonoma, almost says Sonoma again, and Road America. So victors from those two tracks will meet at Indy Road pre-Indy Road to do their ceremony, and then we will have normal ceremonies continuing after that at Indy what Road. about mid-ohio and does portland count too portland has to count right you know i i, I thought about road it course. long and hard cup series tracks have to be present for book of road okay so, that's fair so the cup you know cup maybe series needs to be chance. present at whatever track it is it can't be a standalone xfinity standalone truck that's got right. it they, okay. they'll have their their day in the sun at some point but uh this is going to be so a book of road signing big to talk about I feel like uh, is the the return of the shoot, and you know this is more of a I guess a technical uh, deal of the track, and and I figured this was probably something that you would be a little more equipped to want to run down as I eat my grapes. Whole book of road, 
and sh- shout out to Terry Tornado. Yeah, it's kind of weird how they've gone back and forth on this. You base you lose a passing zone, but you also kind of gain a passing zone. And I like this better than the carousel. I think the carousel is okay. I think it's fine, but uh, I love this shoot because I miss so much and all the the traditional more old school NASCAR fans can relate to this. I love when they you go into the shoot and go wide off that exit. And they used to have like styrofoam sitting there at the edge of that wall. And at some point, and they had the camera right there too. At some point, someone would fucking hit that styrofoam. Like it would, it would happen late, mid or late race every time. But I'm thinking back in like 2003 up to like 2008, 2009. That's how the little packages they, of styrofoams were made because cars would hit the styrofoam walls. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, but Nonetheless, I think um, I like the move. I think the carousel has kind of been boring over the past couple of years from just from my opinion, from my vantage point. So I think it's a good, uh, good move. The one thing I hate is that they're stripping up the curb. That's usually there because they always will. They'll uh, run right over that curb and straddle it and kind of go wide. And, but I, I see why they did it, because you could tear the underbodies off the car. How big of an impact is it going to have on the race itself? Minuscule. I mean, the drivers have raced both. Most of these drivers have raced both styles, both. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Both variations, configurations, configuration. Yeah, that works too. Both, both styles, both types, both corners. Carousel's gone. The shoot is back. So reminds me of 2004, 2005. Even though it was a, it, they had the shoot for up until I think like three years ago. So. It's yeah. nothing crazy. I think it's very minuscule if you want to break it down, but it adds a different element for sure and a different passing zone. So the easiest way to put this is that you don't really see many adults riding carousels. You don't see many children uh, coming out of the sky in parachutes. So that's the easiest way you can correlate this race. Um, so it, I'm glad to see it. I'm not a big fan of carousels. Haven't rode one since I was about five, I believe. So not a big fan. Is good to see uh, the return. The main thing that I'm looking at from this return, so, you know, a lot of talk and chatter has been going on in the betting spaces, especially in the free NASCAR Discord um, presented by Garage Guys, not Discord, but it is free on the Discord platform. A lot of chatter about the uh, the 2017, 2018 races here with the shoot before the, the, the carousel was introduced. Um, you know, Martin Truex Jr. did the most. At uh, I think it was 2018, possibly, and then he won 2019 too with the carousel. Didn't really matter. I mean, he he would do it both ways. So that's where I want to start off uh, this uh this betting chatter is with Martin Truex Jr. Old man Martin himself. Uh, he's plus one thousand. I grabbed him at plus one thousand on Barstool Sportsbook. Not really sure what those odds are cracking at now. Plus nine hundred on DraftKings is what I had saw yesterday. I don't think much has changed. I think that that should probably still be there unless people have just been going to Smash Town on mtj today um but uh but i i gotta ride this this train uh for a couple of different reasons number one uh martin seems to have a knack for this track uh not really doesn't really have much of a knack for other tracks other than martinsville uh as of recent and um and i guess you would say i don't know uh maybe martinsville that's about it i mean i just haven't seen him be like super dominant anywhere else richmond in the last few years. richmond been really good richmond, at richmond yeah i was thinking richmond but i was just like eh. but well he swept richmond this, last year so he, that's definitely he's pretty well, when, damn good there when i look at all of this and and i think about that like okay those are definitely some signs there he hasn't won a race i feel like he could be a sleeping giant but the books don't think so they're valuing him up there like he's a favorite and that's fine but I feel like the public will, will might want to fade him just because of his, you know, how things have been recently. Uh, keep in mind that uh, Cole Pern will be returning this weekend um, as an engineer, filling in for one of the engineers. Anytime I hear that name uh, with Martin Truex Jr., I get a little excited. Get a little excited inside. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of speculation this could be his last year at the track. A lot of people have been chattering. We don't really know that. Uh, that's just some chatter, loose chatter going on. So I would feel like a man of his caliber would probably want to go out with a win. And this is probably seemingly his best track to get it done at uh, and, to, and to try to go ahead and punch his way in the playoffs. So got him at plus 1,000. Ride it or don't. I don't care. Uh, the, the wizard himself, the wine wizard, 
He's going to be drinking this weekend. Yeah, I um, most of what you'll see now is around nine to one, plus nine hundred, plus eight hundred. I still think that's worth it with Martin. Um, I feel like the juju is there with the narrative of he went on Sirius XM and talked about his future. You know what it would be like if he was going to retire or not, and. I think I like that narrative heading into this weekend. And with Cole Pern, of course, like they, they've had the magic together. The last time he won here was 2019. Cole Pern was still the crew chief. So he had actually won two in a row before COVID at Sonoma. So it's a great track for him. His only win that came with Michael Walter racing, the number 56, was at Sonoma in 2013. So I wouldn't be surprised if he would be on my card. I think the these guys won't qualify well. So – I'm going to wait because I, I feel like these – the 19 guys never qualify well. So I think after qualifying, you might see some enhanced value. You see the book be like, oh, shit, he may not have it this weekend. May, may drop him back to 10 to 1, maybe 11 or 12 to 1. What are you thinking? Uh, what are you thinking position for position? Like throw a number. What do you, where do you think he qualifies? Between 12th and 17th. I'm going to say 8th. I'll say 14th. 14th is where Truex will start. Take it to the bank. So for my first pick, I'm going to stick with qualifying while we, you, we're on that conversation and talk about Tyler Reddick. 12 to 1 plus 1,200 via DraftKings Sportsbook is the only book that offers pole position qualifying odds uh, so far. It's still f- pretty fresh in the NASCAR betting market, but DraftKings is doing an excellent job diversifying their bets. Uh, pole qualifying is a really fun one. I've had pretty good success. If I haven't won it, I've been right on – right on the doorstep of winning had Cendric last week for pole qualifying qualified second. So that was a tough one, but I think I'm positive so far. I, when I think I've given out four different qualifying bets. I've gone two for four, maybe three for four, actually. So it, qualifying has gone really well and I've been obsessed with it. So look at Tyler Reddick at 12 to one, three of the last four road courses that have had qualifying. Remember last year when we went to a road course like Sonoma, like Watkins Glen, we did not have qualifying. The lineup was set through that formula that NASCAR had when practice and qualifying wasn't happening. We came to new road courses like Circuit of the Americas, Road America, the Indy Road Course. We did have qualifying. If you look at the data, in three of the last four road courses where we had qualifying, Tyler Reddick has qualified in the top four three of those times, including one poll at Circuit of the Americas in 2021. They've been really good at qualifying in 2022 already at a plethora of different styles of racetracks. So I really like Tyler Reddick at plus 1,200 to get the pole on Sunday. Oh, I guess qualifying will be on Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. I think that's a great value bet. I'm going to lock it in. Can't lock it on an action network. They don't have that variety there to log. But I'll post on Twitter and in our Discord my qualifying bets. Take it to the bank. Reddick will be on there. No doubt in my mind, he qualifies in the top five at the worst. Look, I tried. I tried to cheat a little bit and open up the Book of Road to see if he was the one, um, but my eyes are just really sensitive. I haven't remember Book I haven't of tried Book to of Look at it since Coda. Book of Road is only for race winners, so this is Cup pole qualifying. Can't get you in the Book of Road that way, Red, Red Dog. But you can when I mean, he might already over. be in there. He's already he won the hearts there. over of the garage guys fam over the over the last year or so he can do so even more if he gets the poll on saturday so keep our hey, fingers crossed but i think it's a good bet I, I like i like where we're at right here and uh and you know tyler is going to be one of my outrights i'm gonna go ahead and say it plus 1800 to win this race for a few reasons and i'll chat about that after this but i do like where we're at with qualifying i want to go ahead and just give mine i'm i'm going a little wild this week okay and and I, if i personally feel like it's wild it's probably pretty fucking wild um, plus 1500 Kurt Busch. I'm um, going through qualifying bets the other night. Obviously, there's a couple of favorites that I like, uh, you know, like uh, Ryan Blaney, um, you know, and and possibly, you know, a Bush brother. I haven't really made my full like decision yet, but the one guy I'm 100% sure on that I'm going to put money on is Kurt Busch. The reason this happened to win the race, because I was looking at some past statistics and uh, I don't do that a lot but I was the one thing that I found was that this guy is finishing races pretty well. And this year with this new car, um, you know, on road, if he's already got the record of, of doing pretty decent at tracks like Sonoma, um, you know, this car, it seems like he's got a, had a lot of speed lately. He's been pretty, pretty damn fast. So this um, bet is to win the race, not the pole. 
Yeah, this is going to no, this is going to be to win the poll. To win the poll, okay. To win the poll, and, and I think that this car is capable of doing it. A, it is a Toyota. Uh, B, Kurt Busch is a man full of surprises. Um, married an assassin at some point. Didn't see that coming. Um, wasn't in the book of road. I'll tell you that. But you know, I, I don't really know exactly what it was, other than just kind of the results that I saw. What I've kind of seen a little bit from this year. I just feel like there's this weird feeling that everyone's just going to step over him. Could be completely wrong. One to throw it out there. That is the Gut Boy special poll pick of the week for me. Kurt Busch plus 1500. Um, we can continue on other bets. I already did say Tyler Reddick outright. Um, California boy, it's road. Um, and I bet on him every week. So I feel like it's kind of pointless for me to describe it. But I did log it on Action Network. So if you want to read about it, go check it out. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate the pick. Um, I would look more into him winning the race on Sunday, top five, top three. But Kurt they have Bush. had – yeah, he's, he's great at Sonoma. He's had great results at he's Sonoma. He's plus 2,500 right now to win. I yeah, know. I definitely would – definitely would consider some top five action. Barcel Sportsbook will have probably the best odds that uh, on that front. But uh, I'm going to go with Daniel Suarez, 28-1 to 1 over on Barcel Sportsbook. Talk about how DraftKings has been really good with enhancing value and, and diversifying their product on the NASCAR betting side. The next best one is Barcel Sportsbook because they're constantly providing better top five odds, better top three odds, better top ten odds. The we don't see a lot of top ten. ten odds anymore. Yeah, we don't see a lot of top ten odds anymore, it seems like. Uh, and then you have stage props that they put after qualifying. So Barcel Sportsbook also doing a great job. And that's the best value that I have seen thus far is Daniel Suarez at 28 to 1. I think it would be something that if after Chastain wins the first road course, Daniel Suarez wins the next road course on the schedule. If you look at Coda, Suarez was almost unstoppable early in that race, but have a bad pit stop. And then I think what they had a transmission failure or something, just or they got it a wreck. Went south and it just Coda. went they just had a terrible day after he they should, got he would have won though if, if everything would have been perfect. I mean, yeah, I know he had gotten fast. He had gotten spun out on a restart uh, or, or uh, over in turn one. It may have been the restart. I'm not exactly sure, but got yippee they were, the biggest thing is that they were lightning fast. He started up in the top two. I think he started second and then uh, just took off, just blew the field away early on and won that first stage. So uh, I think there's a good chance that we could see Suarez qualify really well once again and then stick up stick up front, stay up front, and be aggressive in trying to win this race. He's had decent results at Sonoma over the past five years with different race teams, several top 15, top 16 finishes, in worse equipment than what he has now, that's for sure. So I think Daniel Suarez is a great underdog play, 28 to 1. I'd look at top three, top five. Don't be surprised if Suarez comes out there and wins. I know – there's a big veteran deal with this racetrack. It seems like the veterans typically run better here, win this race. Suarez is a veteran. He hasn't won a race yet, but when you look at the speed he had at Coda, it was ridiculous. So I think 28 to 1 is a good bargain for a guy that's been knocking on the door. I agree. And it could be done. Track house is, uh, you know, they, they, they've been burning down the house, put it to you that way. A lot of speed, a lot of quickness. Um, I don't think it's a bad one at all. Uh, you talk about it being a veteran racetrack. Do we consider Eric Jones a veteran? Is he a veteran? Yes. Yeah, he he, he got in a cup in like 17. This is like is his he fifth too or young sixth year. So. a veteran? I uh, know. I don't think so. I think Jones is, is for sure a veteran. He's already switched rides twice. He had the 77, the 20. He's a veteran. And now he's in the 43. He, he's he's certainly a veteran. He definitely in my opinion. Old, like an older man. Um, he may he may be the next MTJ, just not in the 19. Um, to take over if he does retire. And, and that leads me to my first matchup bet that I want to discuss. Eric Jones over Kevin Harvick, uh, which might be a huge shock to some, but it's, it's minus 108. Um, I locked that in over on Barstool Sportsbook. The reason I love this bet, even before the next gen car, Eric Jones soaring flying, even though it was in the Toyota, he was getting good road course race finishes. We saw that he was still capable of that at Coda. And I'll be honest, I never really paid much attention to Eric Jones being anywhere inside of the top 10, but he's pretty familiar 
to the top 10 uh, areas on road. And when I'm thinking about where Kevin Harvick is right now this season, uh, even though I think he finished, what, 11th maybe at Coda, um, Eric Jones still finished ahead of him there. And I think that we're going to see a lot of that today or on, on Sunday when you watch the race. I think we're going to see the same thing. Um, and I said it pretty clear. You know, he's uh, Eric Jones, pretty damn good on road. Kevin Harvick, kind of old. Um, so he's just not really – I, the, the will to, to want or either he's just out of the media. I don't know what it is. Like the media is not giving enough attention. I feel like I've not seen Kevin Harvick once all, at all for anything. Like, at, like uh, you see him, the number four car, that's all you see. So I'm going to play with the, uh, with, with the, with, with the times and the trends. And I'm going to go ahead and take that as my, uh, my dog matchup of the week. What do you think about that one? Yeah. I mean, if you look at what, Kevin Harvick has done at Sonoma up until 2020. Probably he was really, really good. I know he won in 2018, but if you look at Eric playground. Jones, yeah, I mean, if you look at Eric Jones in the 43 car, two top tens in the past three road course races, including Circuit of the Americas earlier this year. It's a whole new game with the Gen 7 car. And Eric Jones has had speed almost at every single racetrack, just hasn't gotten the finishes. So I definitely don't hate that pick. If you look at the look at how Harvick's been trending where Jones has been trending, it's kind of going like this. Jones up here, Harvick here, going in opposite directions. After what we saw at Gateway last week, Eric Jones had another top 10. Harvick, a rare DNF, but nonetheless, he struggled all day long. So uh, I don't hate that bet. My next play is going to be Chase Briscoe. We talk about these guys that are that are road course aces. Uh, Chase Briscoe at 18-1 to 1 via Barcel Sportsbook, which is what I've seen has the best value, plus 1,800. Guy almost won Coda, was in, a, was in a ridiculous battle with Ross Chastain at Circuit of the Americas, almost won at Indy Road Course. So if you look at the past two road course races, the guy has been co contending for the win. Last year was a totally different year, too. And it's at Circuit of the Americas, if he doesn't make a mistake late in that race, which that's the one issue, the one concern is how hard Briscoe pushes. The guy is, I, man, he is a bad He's an animal. You know, that's all I can say. I think he is a wheel man. He reminds me, we all make the Tony Stewart comparisons, and I think that is valid here this weekend because they're both good at road courses. Tony Stewart was great at Sonoma. Final win came at Sonoma almost six years ago, this week or this month or whatever. Classic finish there. Got the 14 magic. He's already won his first career race, and he's been knocking on the door of multiple other wins. When you look at Charlotte, Bristol Dirt, the guy has been in contention a lot this season. And I think he's overperforming an equipment that collectively in their organization, the Stuart Haas organization, has not been great. When you look at what Cole Custer's done, when you look at what Harvick's done part of the season, even Almarola, who's really good at flat tracks, had a great run at Gateway last week. Big flat guy. Whole great personality on the track but and off the track. Everywhere else, Eric Almarola's been eh, lackluster. There's only been one guy in the organization that's contended for wins, and he's done it on a variety of different racetracks. When you look at Phoenix – uh, Circuit of the Americas and Bristol Dirt and Charlotte. So the guy has been contending for wins at all sorts of styles of racetracks. And now we come to a place at Sonoma. I think he ran like 17th here last year. Like I said, totally different year. Rookie years out of the way. First wins out of the way. Contended for the win at Coda. Contended for the win at Indy Road Course. Two of the last three road courses he's been in the mix. I think Chase Briscoe at 18-1. to 1. I'd look at some top three, top five action. Top three at plus, uh, I think it's 570 or 500. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Top three was at plus 500. And I think top five was plus 375 or something like that. I'll have to double check that. But regardless, what I'm saying is the value is really, really strong for Chase Briscoe. So I look at top three here on Barcel Sportsbook. 525 for a top three, I think is great value. Compare that to DraftKings right now. Chase Briscoe for a top three is plus 400. Like I said earlier, Barcel does a great job on enhancing value in top three, top five. So I think Chase Briscoe will be a huge player in this race on Sunday. I think they'll qualify well, and I think they'll run well, and I think he's going to get a top five and contend for the win. Yeah, I uh, the only reason that I'm not touching any of that shit is because of the send it. I feel like it's going to take a certain race for him to zone in and just like completely go ape shit. He's that indie guy. That Indy road race never left he my just, brain. Other than never has. like the road course skill totally mimics Tony Stewart. But I feel like the way he races, 
reminds me so much of Jimmy Johnson, just on the edge all the time. I've always made that comparison. I feel like no one agrees with me there, but he's always on the edge, pushing to the limit. And once he figures out what that limit is, once he finally can can accurately gauge that with these Gen 7 race cars, I think he's just going to win a ridiculous amount of races. Oh, what is oh it? dude, yeah. I, I will say I will Peter back you up there. I like so I think – and and don't don't forget, first ever win in NASCAR was in the Xfinity Series on a road course at the Charlotte Roval. I just think he's being undervalued heavily for this weekend. Great road course racer, underrated road course racer. He's going to contend for the win. I'm very very high on Chase Briscoe, but like you said, the aggression thing. I wouldn't take him in a matchup. I see a matchup against Christopher Bell, who's been getting all the finishes recently, consecutive top tens, top fives, running strong. Briscoe is. Like you said, he's right now he's kind of a wreckers or checkers guy. So wouldn't take him in a there, but job. Yeah, certainly would take him as an outright. Absolutely. All right. I, I will. I can. I can say. You know. I, I, I can see why. Oh, and um, by the way, it just came to me. Daniel Suarez lost power steering at Circuit of the Americas. So that was that's a bad luck right. Thing. Not even fault of his own. Not even something he could have con- really controlled. You know, like like retaliating on someone for spinning him. Man lost power. Um, I will say this about Briscoe, though. If Clint Boyer can come in second place in the 14 car, why can't Chase come in first? So there's that. Hey, Boyer is a good Boyer was a pretty good road racer. He won at Sonoma, I think, in 2012 when he was also in Martinsville uh, later down the line. That was his last did win at Martinsville in 2018. Actually, last one was at Michigan 2018 when it uh, rain delay or Rain ended the race after it was halfway. So I wanted him. But to yeah, win he did. Kansas so bad that year, really did. Just couldn't make it happen. I don't think he ever won Kansas. He didn't. But. It was his. It was his Achilles heel. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my last bet. I love this bet. I love the shit out of this bet, and the value still exists over uh, thanks to the good folks at MGM Sportsbook. Austin Dillon plus four hundred for a top ten. Now. Has Austin Dillon ever got a top 10 at Sonoma? No. Has wait, wait, gotten... say that. Say that bet one more time. Austin Dillon plus 400 for a top 10. Oh, shit. I thought you said 1,400. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. That would have been incredible. But That's still good value. Still good value. Requires a lot, a lot more faith at the plus 400, I feel. For me, at least, as a guy that likes to bet on things, plus a million. Um. You know, I may or may not have put a smidge on Austin Dillon plus 30,000 to win this race. Who knows? Um, but I will say this about the top 10. Man's been knocking. He's already got one top 10. Really impressed the shit out of me at Coda. I did not even realize that he had a top 10 finish until after we left Austin, Texas. That shit right there really opened my eyes. Like, okay, this next gen car is helping this man. And he increasingly was getting better. I noticed from like 2017, 2018, he moved up like two spots, two place differential uh, spots in those races, then had a really bad race in 2019, fell back to 24th. And then I want to say that he was like maybe 13th in 2021 at this racetrack in the Gen 6. And maybe it was like 13th or 14th. I may be off somewhere in that area. I really I'll think. Look. That, Continue. I said, I'll look, continue. Yeah, Let's see. I think it was 13th, but the top 10 is very possible here for, for a guy that has shown that kind of improvement. RCR, they literally, like his grandpa, Richard, all right, we all know Richard, he makes wine. This is like a, a part of like their whole culture, which is why I'm betting on Tyler Reddick to win here. California, RCR, and, and he, we've seen him, what he can do at road courses. I, so we saw him stuck, stick around at Coda. I don't see why it's impossible for him to do it here. So I think it's going to be an all-around great RCR day. Um, big uh, big Rick energy, if you will. Uh, plus, they do have wine. It would be really good for brand marketing and awareness. Make Grandpa proud. Get a top 10. Austin, Tyler, find a way to win the race. And uh, and that's that's my bets for Sonoma. Yeah, Dylan's interesting. Not a big road course guy. But as you said, he has gotten better. Stats I just looked at six out of the last seven road course races, six finishes of 15th or better, one top 10, which was at Coda earlier this year. And you were right, or I think it was 11th at Sonoma. But nonetheless, running top 15 is pretty good value uh, for a guy who's been running close to the top 10 over the past two years at road courses, essentially. So I do not hate that. 
Um, for my final bet, I got to talk about Alex Bowman because this line to me is crazy. Uh, I, I wouldn't say crazy, I guess, but I think there's a lot of value here. And it's Alex Bowman for a top 10 at plus 105 via Barcelona Sportsbook. I know it's been a rough stretch for Bowman, but the guy is a good road course racer. Okay. Also, it's Pride Month, June. They got the Pride sticker on the car. Uh, he's triggering a bunch of the, the really old school guys and girls. I think there's some good juju around that, right? I think there's some great juju around that whole deal. So add the narrative in. Road. You got a lot of people, a lot of boneheads that want him to fail be just because of that logo being on his car. That's going to be the juju. watch. Yeah, I love the juju there. I think he, he could win. You look they at what happened at Coda. stickers on race cars. Right. But he, at, at Circuit of the Americas, he was there at the end. It almost came up and stole that race. And if you look at his statistics on road courses, nine top tens and 16 starts with Hendrick Motorsports. With, with Hendrick Motorsports at Sonoma, three starts, two top tens, worst finish of 14th. I think Alex Bowman for a top 10 is a great value play at plus 105. That's on Barstool Sportsbook. So I saw that, and I was like, damn, I think I'm going to jump on that because these guys are due for a good run, too. It's been a bad stretch for them. Due for a good run at a track they've been pretty good at as a team, as an organization. Look at what Jeff Gordon's done. Chase Elliott has been pretty good here, too. Kyle Larson won here last year with Chase Elliott running second. I know it's a completely different car, completely different year, but I like everything with Alex Bowman this weekend. So Alex Bowman top 10 at plus 105 for me is got to be the play of the weekend from a value standpoint. So love that. And that is my final bet. There's value there. I just, I hate betting plus 100 shit. It sucks. It's like, well, for, I mean, win a lot. It's tough to find somebody that good top at, that. 10 at that value. Who's, been i know he's like i said he has road courses are tight recent, bro they're tight but yeah yeah i mean you look at like briscoe logano tyler reddick are all in that minus 110 range so there's a lot of value on top 10 this week that you ordinarily would not see and that's because road courses have been quite the shit show uh when you look at last year's roval indy road course and coda this year it's been pretty pretty wild but sonoma has always been the more predictable road course race. If you look at all the past winners, if you look at the style of racing, Sonoma has been way more predictable than what you've seen in Roval, Indy road course, uh, circuit of the Americas. So I think we see some normalcy and that involves, or that includes someone like Alex Bowman, who typically runs well at road courses and Sonoma having a good run at Sonoma. It's just classy. It's a classy track. I mean, it, you know, you drink wine, pinkies are up. There's sheep. It's a classy place. You got to keep it classy, a classy place. Um, so, yeah, um, I don't hate it at all. I just personally, I'd probably end up like betting like 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 a thousand dollars on it just because I want more units. And, and, then, then, and like, then he would blow up power steering go out or some shit. But yeah, yeah, we might. It's, wor it's worth it if you just like want that. to get a unit. You know, you, if you yep. want to get that one for one. Yeah, I'm all in. I feel you. I, I'll probably, well, you know, I'm probably going to ride it. You know what else is worth it, right? Prize pick. And prize picks. Oh, he's both. Yeah, at the same time. Two sponsors. Look, prize picks. I feel like I feel like we hadn't talked about prize picks enough. Garage Guys prize picks recently announced a partnership together. And right now, if you go over, download the prize picks app using the link below in our YouTube channel, comments, whatever they call it. You're the you're the guy that makes it, but links in links all over the place. Go to prize picks, use promo code garage guys, and prize picks will depart make a deposit matching bonus up to $100. So you put in 20 bucks, prize picks will put in 20 bucks and you have free money to play daily fantasy in the easiest way possible. So it's, it's actually a lot of fun. And you go on there, they have trucks, they have Xfinity, they have cup you can make customized lineups, two to five players, two to five drivers, I should say. And you can win to up to 10 times your entry fee. So prize fix garage guys, good partnership there. Really fun app and game to play too. So daily fantasy made easy. Prize picks, promo code Garage Guys, and you get free money when you sign up. That's it. And if you do it, I'll also give you a grape. Literally, just tweet at me at Garage Guy Chase. Tell me that you deposited money in your Prize Picks account and you used our promo code. I will mail you a grape, guaranteed. I finished. I dress. finished. I finished the wine glass. I have nothing to give. That's good. Well, you know, regarding I'm this, I'm empty. In my refrigerator, I said it before already, shout out to Prize Picks, but 
Shout out to Hooters too. Um, I got some Hooters in the fridge. I'm about to go two for it one. It was to go. Okay? Two for one. It w- it was to go. Had to take care of it. Had to take care of the game. I'm about to go about to go snack out on it now. And you can get to go as well if you go use promo code Garage Guys. You'll save ten dollars on any order, thirty dollars or more, when ordering from the Hooters app or from order.hooters.com. And that's valid at participating locations for delivery and carryout orders only. Hooters to go is the name of the game on this show this week. That is what we're previewing. That is what we're promoting. Get Hooters to go because we're not going to be at Sonoma. We had to go. We didn't go to Sonoma. We're going to the couch. So we're getting to go. And we're watching Sonoma. And, uh, and yeah, this has been a preview show. Uh, and I've ate a lot of fucking grapes. Yeah. I, uh, and by the way, this wasn't actually wine. It was a red uh, V8 energy drink. Actually, half semi-healthy energy drinks, by the way. Pretty good. So, uh, It'd be a lot cooler if you just said you drink wine. But all right. Well, it did. I it did not look like wine. I think people in the video would be like, "That is fucking absolutely not wine. That's some kind of red." Maybe shit. like cheer wine. Good shit. Yeah. Cheer wine is a little bit darker than that. Cheer wine is like, it. I think cheer wine is like blood, like dark blood red. Like if you put blood, if you just like drew blood and had it in a in a bottle, it would look. That's what cheer wine looks like. Like Dr Pepper with cherries in it. Yeah, it's got like red, red fizz, but the bulk of the drink is like dark with like dark black, brown with a red tint on it. Cheer wine is very, to me, it's like Dr. Pepper. They don't taste that similar, but the meh, very meh. That's what Dr. Pepper is for me. That's what, hey, that's what cheer wine if is. If it's going to be that close, fuck all that. Shout out to Mr. Pib. Right, big Mr. Pib guy. Same, same shit. Same shit. Pib big extra. Cheer wine peppers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's Sonoma. It's the Toyota Say Mark 350. And we'll see you later, Garage Guys. It's the 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 Garage Guys. The garage guys, it's 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 the garage guys. It's 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 the garage guys. It's it's the garage guys.